Uh huh. Welcome back, listeners, to Yeah, Aha uh-huh with Lisa and Phil and our frequent flyer guest, Aaron. Boy, his arms must be tired. Hello. Hey, guys. This week, we're talking to Debbie Clement. Uh, she is a children's author. One of the unique things about her author situation is that she not only writes books, and illustrates them, but she also makes music and songs to go with those books, and she includes American Sign Language as well. So welcome, Debbie, and uh, you're impressive. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> welcome. There it Thank is. you. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. I have been at this now, well, as an independent consultant for 25 years, depending on how you count the pandemic, maybe 27 years. But um, I have written over a hundred original songs for young children that are at their heart very simple and repetitive and based on brain research in terms of, of building patterns within a song and rhyme and all sorts of good things that that happen in kindergarten (laughs) and I have turned thank you for talking about the books over the last probably about 16 years I've turned four of those songs into the traditional picture book format so the lyrics of the song are the text of the book and I have a brand new book, and I'm excited to be able to talk about that and share about that, especially in this back to school time where so much, um, there are so many concerns for public education, well, for education in general, but our teachers are tired and weary. And so I usually am the happy spark plug that gets to come in and sing and dance with the kids and bring some joy back right. into the classroom. So that's we, my job. We should also say underpaid. That's a very oh. important factor as well. So, <laughs> well, um, there you go. There you yeah, go. Everyone in education is underpaid. Absolutely. Founder of Rainbows Within Reach. That's it. That is your organization, your uh, company. Mm-hmm. Um, the company of one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, hey, that way you don't have to argue with anybody on the board of directors. There you go. There you go. I like. I like it when you, you kind of have a mission statement, and like at the beginning when you go to your website, which is rainbowswithinreach.com. Rainbow within reach, rainbows within reach.com. Yeah. Um, you see right on the beginning, it's about early literacy, arts, and anti racism. So that's a very that's right. clear message right off the top. That's what you're opening up mm-hmm. when you go there. And I should yeah. say, yesterday, uh, it was kind of a, uh, if it was an indicator that this was like a kismet or whatever, mm-hmm. we saw a rainbow. Yeah, we went to the movie. Right. Yeah, we looked up. Yeah, we've got a lot of uh, summer thunderstorms happening. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, And yeah, we're we were driving towards the movies and do what, Aaron? I said we could use those here. I will wish them towards you. (laughs) Yes. Thank you. Um, if if rainbows and wishes, you know. Uh, but yeah, we we saw this big old rainbow. It was beautiful. Philip took a picture of it. Oh, but that's very effective. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you call it marketing. To me, marketing has negative content, but that's good messaging. Yeah, you know, oh, the thank very clear you. Mm-hmm. Can I tell you this story that I probably have only told once or twice in 25 years of where that name mm-hmm. came from? Sure. Please. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, this goes way back before I was out of college. Well, when I was just started college, and as a education person, we were assigned to go to school and just observe. We were only supposed to observe. Well, so anyhow, after just sitting and observing and taking notes for probably about an hour or so, this little kid kid came up and, and tugged on my hand and said, have you seen the rainbow in our classroom? And I said, why no, I haven't. I've been sitting here looking all around and I haven't seen a rainbow. He says, we have a rainbow right here in our class, it's in our in our room. And I, okay, and he says, do you want to see it? 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 And I'm 
<laughs> sure. So he took me, I'm sure I wasn't supposed to leave my little chair, but he took me by the hand and took me over to the fish aquarium in the classroom. And he said, see, there it is, there it is. Look, 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 it's a rainbow, it's a rainbow, it's a rainbow. And I'm looking in this fish aquarium and I see no rainbows. Uh, of course, I'm a tall person looking down into this, you know, seeing the bubbles and, and not seeing any rainbows. And he says, yes, you do. You have to see it. You have to see our rainbow. I know you can see it. I know you can. And, and I said, well, you know, I always want to tell the truth and and I'm not, I don't see a rainbow. And so he yanked me all the way down to his eye level which of course is way down at the bottom of this fish tank. And sure enough, the way the fish tank was sitting with the window behind it and enough sunlight coming through that there was a perfect rainbow, you know, right there inside the fish tank that, that no tall person looking down would get to see. But getting down on the eye level of the children, uh, it was it was there in technicolor as as big as as a bus, and so that really struck me that you know that to be an educator and to work with young children, you know we need to be within reach. We need to get at their eye level and see the world through their prism, literally in that case, and see yeah. the rainbow. So that's the story that I bet nobody knows. <laughs> wow, that's that's see, a powerful that's, story. That's, that's really good. Amazing, and it's about perspective. Yeah. And yeah. and for me, if I were a kindergarten teacher and I oversaw that interaction, I would have been upset if you didn't. <laughs> right. right respond to the child it exactly. would have been a flag for me that maybe you weren't meant for that age range <laughs> right. exactly right. well yeah that's thanks for that story that was that was really effective yeah. you know i really yeah it, it kind of capsulizes kind of uh yeah a good thought there yeah. um it's also cool that he let you in on his secret rainbow well, exactly. Right. Exactly. Trust. Yeah. Well, yeah. and that that children have that capability of of seeing and absorbing and and then you know for me to see his absolute frustration that you know I couldn't see it and and then this this yank to get me down there. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Um, old nineteen-year-old person, or however old I was at that point in time, get down here so you can see the rainbow so that at some level has stayed with me all these years that there really are <laughs> rainbows like the one that you saw I mean had you not look at that moment in that direction um, my husband was actually golfing yesterday morning and it's at a little distance from our home but there was a rainbow on the golf course <laughs> at, but not at my house uh, not here at the house and so he took a picture of it so that idea that there really are rainbows and and hope and encouragement uh right in our very midst if, if we're searching for it yeah. yeah um so we love having creative people on and you okay. certainly fit the bill and um so i wonder how do you, how do you go about uh creating you know you start with what you call a ditty right yeah. Very and, good. Uh, you have done your research. Yeah, and you, you know, you, yeah, like we dive deep on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Um, and and you're very good at creating a powerful message, even if you know, even if it's a simple one, that's kind of a challenge. So, yeah, you like, yeah. I think sit, that's more challenging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you sit down at a piano or a guitar, or you just sort of start uh, humming? Start with you know, the words. Network? I, I'm I'm sort of on the humming channel. I do have a guitar, and you see that maybe um, in images again under the marketing kind of plan. In going into classrooms, I typically don't even take it along just because it's one more thing to carry. But when I use it, I am the master of about six or maybe ten chords. Um, mm -hmm. I am so slick with C, G, and G seven, and. Um, you know, you can play about the entire children's repertoire with about uh, 10 chords. So I use it almost like another prop, another uh, puppet, another hat to wear. You know, I, I tell teachers all the time, stop and pick up a guitar at a, at a 
yard sale, you know, teach yourself three chords and you can be a rock star in the eyes of your, the kids in your classroom, you know, within two or three weeks, for sure. Um, give yourself two or three months and you're leading the band. And, and I do have a background in piano, but to tell you the truth, my songs really come out of that humming that you were alluding to, Lisa. I, I can hear melodies. I mean, music is not my college degree. Art is my college de degree with education. Um, but very well, okay, so 25, 28, seven years of doing this. For the 10 years prior to starting this, I was the art and music teacher, resource teacher, I think my title was, at a private preschool for children with special needs. And that's where the sign language aspect comes into things, is that these were young children, uh, many of whom had language delays, some of whom were crack babies or fetal alcohol syndrome kids or kids from some pretty disruptive background home situations. Um, and they were only, at that point, three to five years old. Uh, very little language. And trust me, my guitar and my three chords, that's impressive to, you know, strum and there's, there's music in the air. And I would let have the children strum the guitar and we would sing their name. My name is Timmy, 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 as they strummed along, strummed along and felt literally the making of that music. Um, so nothing that I do musically that I do is, is especially uh, dramatic or elaborate. It, it is meant to be simple. And, and probably um, having done staff development across the country, across the world really uh, for decades now, I do love it when teachers come up and go, you know, I'm not, I'm not a very creative person and, and I'm really not at all musical, but your things, your songs are so easy. <laughs> Even I can sing along. And, and so they do, they sing along, you know, they pick one, whatever happy little thing that they, that resonates with them. And then I think that gives them the courage. The kids respond, you know, the behavior diminishes and the attention from the students increases and the teacher thinks, wow, look at me, maybe I, you know, maybe I can sing. Um, and they take another step further in that. What I owe all of the glory of my recordings is that I was so fortunate back a million years ago when there were yellow pages and some teachers said, you know what? I wish you would record these ideas, these little ditties of yours. Um, and and think for me to think of them not even like as songs, just ditties, just little things that we're gonna sing, mm -hmm. just happy little ditties. It took the pressure off of me <laughs> and whatever boogeyman I have about uh, my capabilities. But anyhow, I opened up the yellow pages and there at the top of the alphabet was a Mara Sound Studio in Columbus, Ohio. And so I dialed the very first one in the list and said, hey, teachers are asking me to make some recordings. How would I even go about doing that? And so for 25 years, um, I've had the great good fortune of, of working there, recording everything that I have done professionally um, under Dan Green who now is an angel in heaven. He has just passed from us. And um, this is me trying to say his name without coming to tears, but um, oh. was very fortunate to get to work with a brilliant, talented, hilarious. He would do sound effects and he would do voices. And, and that became kind of the hallmark of, of my, my work is that he was always the, the uh, talent over mm -hmm. my shoulder. And he knew all the musicians in Columbus, Ohio. And so he'd say, okay, Deb, we got to have a banjo on this. Um, I know who plays a banjo. Let me get a hold of, you know, or we've got to have, um, oh, the professor at Ohio State, that trombonist from the jazz arts group. Let's get him in here and he'll throw down some, some real tunes. So it's all that collaboration of brilliant people who were trained in music, who came and added their capability to these little ditties. <laughs> Being relatable and making it simple enough for others to share is a real oh. talent. Well, yeah. thank you. Um, that, that does mean something to me when 
I can walk into a building and they may have 150, you know, kindergarten through second graders in a gymnasium. And sometimes I'm fortunate that the music teacher has worked with the kids ahead of time. And I'm, I really am the rock star coming into their building. <laughs> a lot of times, you know, it's like, here's the author. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, maybe nobody's had any time to prepare the kids. And so I'm teaching, you know, 120 kids a song they've never heard before. And, and they are simple. And, and kids really do sing along and giving them permission, you know, to be a part of the show, inviting some kids up on the stage with me. Um, it's, it's a great joy. Yeah, well, yeah, we listened to your wonderful. I, I, that was a live performance you did, and I thought it was really mm -hmm. great the way you know you had the audience, mm -hmm. the, the children, and I presume their parents, Signing. the educators, were participating mm -hmm. in this song. Oh, I thought I that, was that you saw that one. I think you're And probably that kid is going to be the one that in 15 years is still going to be able to do the, you know, the whole right. thing without sitting down for a minute. Yes, I mean, I yes. could spend an entire class doing this and the teacher would ask me a question and I'd be able to recite everything they said. That's my first, that was from my first, are you ready for this? Give me a drum roll. That was from my first cassette tape. Ah. <laughs> so again, I'm sure there are people listening that have never inserted a cassette tape into If you, if you tape. don't know what a cassette tape is, ask grandma. <laughs> grandma! But um, that song came from probably um, one of the lowest points of my life. My dear sweet husband is a pilot. And we were, and we'll just leave out the whole backstory, but we left Columbus, Ohio, speaking to my Ohio friends, um, from the, the um, Buckeye Airport, just the two of us in this little plane. And it was a really gray day, really cloudy, overcast, but he's instrument rated. And so we took off and I'm kind of sitting there as a basket case. And, and as we landed in Wisconsin, where I am at this very minute, and I just happened to be looking at a, a beautiful blue sky day here today, and we're coming down over Lake Michigan and coming out of those literal clouds and all that grayness and came into this resort area where we spend our summers now, it's called Door County, Wisconsin. And all these little sailboats are happily sailing, you know, perched on the edge of the water and the sun's coming in. And, and I'm like, oh, wow, this is so wonderful. Oh, wow, this is so marvelous. They have the same sign, wonderful and marvelous. And then I'm saying to myself, oh, wow, it's so beautiful. This is like magical. Oh, I'm filled with curiosity. This is your Adam's apple. And Adam is curious about apples and dreams. Well, anyhow, as we're landing on the airstrip, just past all these sailboats, I remember that we used to have a TheraPlay therapist, Mary, and so we would literally get one-on-one -on -one with these kids with all the various difficulties and challenges, and we would sing the ABC song, ABC, and at the end, she'd have us sing 
tell me what you think of me. And then our job was to create eye contact with this child for whom maybe that was a huge issue, um, a sensory kid, you know, that didn't want to be in your lap in the first place. And we would look at them and we'd say, oh, you know, Jonathan, oh, Kiana, I think you're wonderful. I just, I think you're just, you're terrific. You're marvelous. You're, and, and really try to rebond with them in terms of neuro pathways in their brains, you know, to give them all that happy serotonin and all that good stuff. And so as we were landing in this very dark and challenging time in my life, and there's the sun, and I'm saying all those words that we had told these children, uh, oh, this, you know, I think you're wonderful. I think you're marvelous. And I literally wrote them on the back of an envelope. And, and in that moment, I literally did hum to myself, Lisa. I really didn't hear a little tune. And it was there. I mean, once it was there, it was not going to disappear. And at that point, um, I had another, a little goldfish puppet that I had purchased at a, a, a kid's shop. And I had a little goldy, goldy goldfish swims all day around her. Well, so that's when I called. I had two songs <laughs> um, and called Amira Sound. And got an arranger, Tom Martin, who did the arrangements, and Dan did all the engineering, and, and Dan is actually the male voice, um, Dan, who just passed away on his birthday, mm -hmm. um, and, um, and I, at the time, I mean, being in the recording studio, that was, of course, my first ever, you know, and you've got the big headsets, and you're on the glass, and he's on the other side, and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, I'm singing all these, these words of affirmation. I think you're wonderful. I think you're marvelous. And then the child voice has to sing what? Do you think I'm wonderful? You know, mm -hmm. I can't tie my shoes. You think I'm marvelous? Uh, I can't write my name. Um, no, you have yeah. to sing this. Dan, you have to come over here and sing this. And he's like, well, I don't even know. And I'm like, well, it's for five-year-old kids. Come on, uh, you can yeah. do it. And I had no idea that he was the singer-songwriter talent of, of <laughs> the Midwest. And mm -hmm. sure enough, of course he did. <laughs> the rest well, is sorry. history. Sorry for your mm -hmm. loss, your yeah. friend, Dan. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so it really is of that long. It no. is the end of an era. This newest book, you know, I I uh, I'm so grateful that we got the recording done, and um, it's one of those, you know, is it is it angels? What is it? Um, I had literally been calling him. And mm -hmm. so my phone, uh, you know, he said my recently dialed calls um, because I kept saying, you know, the big ending, I need more Dan, man. Dan, go back in there. It's all done. It's all ready to go. Uh, we're ready to print the book, but I really want more Dan, man on the ending. Mm -hmm. And so he's in my frequently called because I we just then right. kept talking to each other. But anyhow, um, mm -hmm. my daughter, who was instrumental in this whole new book, Mighty Wings, was at our house in Florida, and we're sitting on the lanai, and I have my phone in my hand, and I see that on Instagram, a mutual friend is saying, you know, Dan, fly free, or something sort of esoterically metaphor. I'm like, where is it? What does that mean? Yeah. I just okay, talked yeah. to him three days ago, and sure enough, I looked on his Facebook page, and it's already announced that he has died unexpectedly, and I have my phone in my hand, and no kidding, at that very minute, the first monarch butterfly of our winter season in Florida was in my backyard, and I was able to go out and film it, and the last song that, that we did together is this Monarch Butterfly effort, so um, just like you saw Rainbow Kismet, you know, a God wink, whatever that was before we were ready to talk about rainbows, I was was blessed to see a monarch as I was taking in the news that that I would no longer work with him, so, well, so treasure the people you love. Yeah, <laughs> oh, right, absolutely. Right. So as we go into a break, we're going to take a break here for okay. our sponsor. Mm -hmm. As we go into the break, is it okay to play a bit of oh, I Mighty Wings?
begins in the milkweed leaves so green. Searching for the tiniest eggs you've ever seen. Mama Monarch plays her eggs on the back of the leaf. When we are searching, we must look underneath. In a few days when the egg hatches, he has a long way to go. The ultimate destination is down in Mexico. Now he's a caterpillar crawling along. I wish I had a caterpillar song. He has stripes, black, white, and yellow. He is such an Interesting fellow, look for the pattern on his back. See the colors yellow, white, and black. I, I watched Meet the Press this morning. Okay. Um, and they had the Secretary of Education on, Miguel Cardona. Okay. And he was talking about the American Rescue Plan, um, you know, the uh, kind of the exodus of teachers uh, from the profession and the number of administrators that are trying, are being kind of uh, pressed into service as teachers again, maybe. And, you know, just get a, a you know, bring a little bit of the, uh, the climate for education in the focus right now. I don't, is that okay to talk about? I mean, do you have- That, that is, I'll, um, yes. I think that's real life America. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. we, were, we were also discussing the fact that um, it seems as if on occasion, Congress almost weaponizes education. No. Education celebrity. Do you ever consider going into activism about that kind of thing? Well, I, I speak about that quietly from my little platform, if you will. I mean, not quietly. I mean, I'm like, we have to vote, people. Yeah. People, we have to vote. We have to register to vote. Your vote counts. Um, and certainly the, the anti-racism, you know, I may be a little bit more comfortable talking about my experience growing up in a very racially divided high school that, you know, we had policemen and riots um, back in the, um, so that would have been the early 70s in my high school. And, you know, and the aftermath of that, interestingly enough, my dad, who is 93 and living, shares the actual birth date and year of birth with Martin Luther King Jr. And so, um, anyhow, I can, I can go but on. He would be late. 93 now. Yes, he would be 93. Yes. Um, and my father's a retired pastor, and at that time, in that um, turbulent times then, uh, we, very white little family of us, would attend interracial religious, you know, where we would often be the only white family amid Black families in, a, in terms of um, walking the walk. I mean, literally yeah. being together on the street. Um, so I have a little bit more of a personal connection to the anti-racism piece mm -hmm. of things uh, than probably the bigger, oh my gosh, what the all bigger, the The bigger are. education picture. Well, and, and racism and bullying and education um, reform are such important subjects that there need to be rock stars in every one of them. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, you're talking about lower income uh, kids, uh, unfortunately, you know, mm -hmm. they might not get opportunity of a private education or personalized education. Special education. Um, yes. They're the ones that can fall, you know, kind of fall through the cracks of the system if, if there's not enough support for education, you know. Um, Absolutely. Um, yeah. The reality is, as an independent consultant in the arts, if you will, and if you think about school budgets and what gets cut first, it's probably the arts. And, mm -hmm. and it quite possibly is, you know, an extra person coming in the arts. But um, 
I tend to get invited at either extreme of a school district's budgeting. It's, it's probably either um, a school that has very little um, outside uh, parental guidance, you know, economic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But perhaps there's someone in the building who is capable at writing a grant that recognizes, as you say, a rock star coming into school that can sing and dance and laugh and talk about, you know, let's have ideas and write them down. You know, that's my whole job, boys and girls. They, they pay me money to have ideas and write them down. You too can have an idea and write it down. And that's where it all starts. And, and so either um, at that level where somebody's probably written a grant or I'm coming in on some title money for reading recovery, or I'm at a school where um, the PTA president, you know, says, I hear you're really great. Hey, um, I have a big check book and I'd like to write you a big check. Is that, is this check big enough? And I'm like, okay, yeah. And so my concern too, is those schools in between, you know, um, what I mean that, that yeah. don't have a huge um, probably affiliation. the bulk of schools, really. Well, yeah, exactly. That would be every school probably one... in suburbia, you know, or or downtown. Um, exactly. About personalized education, there's like a handful of districts that use personalized education that emphasize metrics other than the age of the students. You know, like. Uh, uh, talent, you know, talent in mathematics, or for instance, mm -hmm. in science and stuff like that, to adjust the levels of education, you know, almost strategically. To match the student more child. than the, the system. And that's, I mean, that's but very. That's a special school, like there's a school like that here in Cincinnati. That's a, yeah, okay. that's a very small number of schools yeah, that are. There's not a lot. That's kind of right. high in the sky stuff. And because... it, well, no, because it's, um, what is that called? Uh, where they let the students work at their own pace? Well, there's something called project-based. Oh, Montessori. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. sure. Um, Montessori is similar to that, but it's different from what Philip's talking about, I think. I mean, well, this is more... And there are any specific. number of initiatives that, you know, that, that catch hold maybe for... A, a while. Um, there's there's whole brain teaching, there's mm. project-based um, instruction. And so if a, a five-year-old is passionate about dinosaurs, you know, that, that the teacher can help that child design a project that then, you know, creates their education, so to speak, so that, that math can be taught through those dinosaurs. And, and obviously the, the child is excited and that project is important to them and, and they're really invested. Um, I personally am a big proponent of what is called Reggio Emilia approach to education that comes from, to us from um, Reggio in Italy. It's a, a province, an area. And right after the second war, their entire region was bombed to nothing. And as the villagers literally uh, reconvened, as the rubble settled, they realized if there was any future, they had the hope of the children, the talents and the inherent hope of the children. And they also were blessed with many artisans. It was an area of poets and and photographers and, and um, craftspeople. And so they built their schools with um, the professionals having their studio within the school, if that makes sense. And so the children would see the professional working in whatever media that might be, clay or paint, and inspire the kids and then the kids, you know, would inspire. So it's a, a real reciprocal uh, piece of, of approach to education. And of course, it's very arts-based too. So um, that's going to ring all the bells for me. But this is a time of precarious, at the edge of so much loss. It literally, teachers just saying, I just can't do it any longer. You know, I, I was 
five years away from retirement, I was, or, or even beginning teachers who have said, you know, I came into this with such rose-colored glasses and the reality of, of where our public education is now, the pressures on teachers. Um, some districts where they're to teach to a script. And so literally the curriculum comes to them in a box. And, and at 9.05, they're all supposed to be saying A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And that there's literally no allowance for any kind of personalization from the educator. Um, and to me, that would be soul crushing uh, right now. Um, so it's lots of pressures, lots of, of attrition. Um, some brilliant, amazing, wonderful people, of course, are hanging in there. Uh, and so they're to be applauded. And in, in my feeling, they really are the frontline heroes um, yeah. that, that make the difference to our entire society. Um, mm -hmm. How we celebrated them at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, and then how we've they've been blamed for so many things um, as the pandemic, you know, continues two years later. Um, right. It's a hard place to be unless it's your absolute passion. Right. Well, speaking of passion <laughs> and mentoring and wonderful people, how about Hi. your men mm -hmm. the mentor's mentor, Mimi Chenfeld? Oh! I thought maybe you might want to talk about her a little bit. So. Oh, wow. Well, she... Oh! I am a fortunate person. Mem is, um, she's the age of my mom. She's 87. And, mm. and Mem is, has literally written the textbook on movement and poetry and the arts as it relates to education. And so if I've been at this 25 years, probably I saw her for the first time, maybe at least 35 years ago. Um, even at that point, as she had a tambourine. Her tambourine is always the leader of the band. And she had a little worn uh, puppet named Snowball 35 years ago that she continues to travel with. Uh, she is a one of a kind person uh, with such a big heart and such an amazing uh, storyteller. I mean, talk about storytellers. She can tell a story like none other. Um, and she's a collector of stories. So when something absolutely pivotal happens, like a child tugging you down to the, the fish aquarium to see the rainbow, she gets permission to put that as a little chapter in a teaching in the key of life book that she writes. Uh, so she she gleans those wonderful upbeat stories from across the country and then shares those. She's still on the stage. I mean, she oh. and I just, yeah, we just shared the stage. Oh, uh, what's today? Maybe a week ago? No, it must maybe be. Anyhow, Sunday, um, the 21st. <laughs> <laughs> we were okay so it'll be two weeks ago two weeks ago um we were both the uh, kickoff people to the new school year in columbus ohio mm -hmm. and so uh she, she was the keynote if you will to open the day and then i had two hours um to follow on her so yes having those kind of touchstone um, rock star people in your life over the long haul is a gift like none other. She's, yeah. she's amazing. Well, that's amazing. Um, so when I think about that, I think about rock stars. I got to mm -hmm. think about Mr. Rogers. Oh, for kids. Cause Mr. when I was Rogers. growing up, yeah, when I, when mm -hmm. I was growing up, you know, when I was really young, you know, it, I watched Mr. Rogers every day. And what, when I look back on it now, I'm like, you know, I had a pretty good childhood, but it was darker than Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, you know. <laughs> it, it brought, Most people's were. It brought a degree of pleasantness and stuff like that, you know, like, uh, you know, the uh, the land of make-believe and, yes. you know, his routine mm -hmm. and his daily routine and stuff like that. Um, and that and, continuity, when you talk about daily routine, uh, yeah. for you, sweater, even, slippers, yeah, and, zip right. in the sweater. I just read that a little girl who was blind watching his show daily 
um, and he had a fish, he had a little fishbowl there. And she wrote to him and said, I'm concerned that you haven't fed the fish recently. And so from then on, in the true rock star, he would always articulate that he's feeding the fish. So every day at that point over, he would say, okay, it's time to feed the fish. Let me get the fish food for that one child who had written to him up with her concern. Visually impaired girl. Yes, yeah. yeah. And again, that's somebody with a big heart that understands their audience and, and also can understand the power of one child, their life, what, what his continuity, what his um, coming into her life to brighten it up meant. So yes, he was obviously... I think his quote about, you know, the the heroes, uh, look for those, when all is going wrong, look for the people who are rushing toward the the chaos, and, and those are the heroes. Yeah. All right, Rogers, you got the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very much concerned, as I know you are, about what's being delivered to our children in this country. And I've worked in the field of child development for six years now, trying to understand the inner needs of children. We deal with such things as, as the inner drama of childhood. We don't have to bop somebody over the head to make him, to, to make drama on the screen. We deal with such things as getting a haircut or the feelings about brothers and sisters and the kind of anger that arises in simple family situations. And we speak to it constructively. How long a program is it? It's a half hour every day. And this is what, this is what I give. I give an expression of care every day to each child to help him realize that he is unique. I end the program by saying, You've made this day a special day by just your being you. There's no person in the whole world like you, and I like you just the way you are. And I feel that if we in public television can only make it clear that feelings are mentionable and manageable, we will have done a great service for mental health. Do you narrate it? I'm the host, yes. And I do all the puppets, and I write all the music, and I write all the scripts. Well, I'm supposed to be a pretty tough guy, and this is the first time I've had goosebumps for the last two days. <laughs> he yeah, taught us I... simple songs, too. Who are the people in your neighborhood? Right. Mm. I came so close. Oh, my goodness. I came so close to having my own TV show. And we used to talk about it um, in the... Mm. You'd and be great the, at it. Yeah, and the well, whole idea was to just have a very simple format, you know, with my very simple repetitive songs and a couple puppets and a couple props and and um, oh, we had had the whole outline for the first season and and we were meeting with backers and that was two thousand and eight when the bottom fell out of the stock market and the whole world kind of tilted a little bit in America and and that. TV show never came to be. So, um, I, uh, Mr. Rogers, yeah, yeah talk about a, a hero. Uh, feeling like I could carry that torch, you know, I could, I could be the Mr. Rogers for this next yeah. generation. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a really good idea. They need because, one. They need one. I yeah. mean, yeah, and especially with, uh, I mean, Aaron homeschooled his boys. I'm sure something like this would have been amazing, and. Early childhood learning, the more you layer learning, you know, like with the song and the book and the sign language, right. um, adding music to it, uh, teaching two languages at once. Yes. That's and then I have opening have pathways in the brain. <laughs> you're good. You could, you're, you could be there with me on the stage. I mean, that's exactly what I talk about is getting more yeah. bang for your brain. But who's, who's you know, that on your finger? To, this well, is yeah, my, yeah, my this happy is little that. caterpillar for the monarch butterflies. And, uh -huh. and I had this little puppet before I became 
um, educated about the plight of monarch butterflies. And truly, I mean, again, under a, you can't make this up. They also had this <laughs> <one. laughs> And so had these two puppets. When my daughter um, at the beginning of the pandemic was like, mom, the monarch butterfly, you know, it's endangered if we don't do something. You're, and, and she was, I'm like, Sarah, you know, I haven't, the, the pandemic literally closed every invitation into schools, closed every invitation into conferences. And I'm like, you know, I have no more people. And she's like, no, you're the one person. You can write the song. You know, you can, uh, I was doing the happy little, see the caterpillar crawl along on Facebook Live at the beginning of the pandemic. And I had just finished. So they come out of their chrysalis and I had just finished creating this mother. Oh, nice. So neat. Very oh, nice. Oh, mom, you have to make it a book. You have to, you know, you, and I'm like, it's not mm -hmm. enough, my little caterpillar thing. And she's like, well, then write a song too. <laughs> so <laughs> this newest book has a couple of exciting things. It has two songs. It has a mm -hmm. caterpillar rap, which is just <laughs> spoken and very curriculum for 10 to 14. 14 days this happens and and then there's the call and response song at the end and that I sing and then Dan sings back and I sing it in sign language Lisa so you would appreciate that I want to help here's help some more and so that's the job of all of us that are concerned about and and once you get educated about the monarch butterfly and and how endangered they are and what we're doing to them and it's really the canary in the coal mine for us as human people on this planet not to be too uh, alarmist but we're losing our pollinators and and it it's a dire you know it it has some um, implications um every time we lose another one of these these little pollinator I, friends, whether it's not yeah, I've, bees. I've seen a few in, in recent weeks. I hike a lot. So I've I've seen two or three in the last three or four weeks probably. Okay. Monarchs. And how many would you have seen five years ago? That's it depends on the time of the year. They, right. they were uh, they were migrating once and they they were just crossing the freeways. There's lines of them. It's insane. Oh. I have yet to see that, and that's on my bucket list to get, get to Mexico, um, to the the grounds where they hibernate together. Um, yeah. maybe were they able to winter. save that? They were. They... Well, that um, yes, it's a like a. It wasn't what, bulldozed for the wall. Uh no, it's down into the country far enough. Um, there are other issues though around. Um, the logging of the trees. So they, just like there are people that kill elephants for their tusks, there are people who would take down the OML fir trees in terms of financial gain. Um, so even though there's a protected, there's a couple protected reserves where these trees are that they fly two and 3,000 miles to, um, there are ne'er-do-well people doing bad things, um, selling drugs, um, and there have been some some horrific, uh, unfortunate murder to uh, advocates who have, are trying to do the right thing. So it's a hotbed in Mexico, um, for sure. There's a lot of poverty surrounding the reserve. And again, um, these silly little butterflies, they don't know to land on this side of the fence and get on the, you know, preserved side. And so they might land on the tree literally adjacent where that family in poverty has the means to cut down their own tree. It is the tree that they own on their land um, to feed their children or probably the other easy access for for feeding your family is drug money. And so there are organizations that are working hard to, you know, literally bring clean water and education and help those families understand there's tourism dollars. You know, there's a little lady 
Wisconsin that wants to come down here and and at some point maybe she'll have a few bucks to spend and Make so a how extra can room we... Airbnb yeah. exactly. Monarch, Airbnb yes exactly um and so there are those who are informed and doing all that they can to help that immediate layer of poverty but as we have our issues in America, you can imagine that um, in Mexico, that also comes with many layers. Um, but it starts with the monarch butterfly. And then all of a sudden you find yourself advocating you know, uh, against pesticides and, and mowing down this and that and poisoning of, you know, uh, yeah, having always, a big uh, all American turf lawn in the front of your, you know, your home um, that you're, feeding with all kinds of chemicals um, and in essence, you know, killing. Yeah, we don't do that. And in yeah, the West, do wasting water. <clears throat> yeah. Don't we worry, we just let the weeds grow. <laughs> well, as we wind down here, mm -hmm. um, uh, the last thing I would say is that when I'm, when I'm talking to kids, sometimes I'm intimidated by their honesty. You know, maybe it's um, because you haven't had kids or maybe it's because your family wasn't real open and yeah. uh, they weren't emotionally open. So what is the magic of, mm -hmm. of being able to talk on a left? You know, Lisa's very good at it. She makes mm -hmm. friends with, uh, you know, her people and line. nephews and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Children. So I love to talk to kids. They're what, is fun. The, what is the language mm -hmm. that children are, you know, they look at you and say, oh, you're not trying to BS me. They don't hate I'm you I'm actually yet. engaged in a conversation with you, you know. Yeah. What well, I think they have an absolute barometer uh, for truth and for your interest in them. I think they know in a heartbeat if you're faking it. Um, mm -hmm. And and they they also, I mean, the thing I love about kids is they know if you're hurting. I mean, so I'm the happy lady coming to do the happy things. I'm a two-time cancer survivor. And I remember like it was yesterday, this little guy, I, you know, I, wear polka dots and maybe not quite clown-like, but but happy pants and and um, and the, and this little guy that's might good. have been festive. That's exactly what my kids say. Mom, could you be a little less festive when we go out to dinner tonight? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and I, no, as a matter of fact, um, when I first started this, my daughters were in junior high and I was dressing in the festive whereas Aaron has the perception to call it. and um, my girls played volleyball after school and I was like well listen I can either come straight from this gig and I'll be dressed in my festive, be festive. or my festive I wear. can <laughs> stop somewhere and put on my civilian clothes and just come in as a mom you know under the radar and I'm like oh I'll get there from the beginning and so anyhow I would go in my festive clothes and they're seventh and eighth grade peer friends would be like, oh my gosh, your mom is so cool. Ah, did you see her overalls? Where did she get those with all the blah, 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 blah. And so once I was cool in the eyes of their friends, I was allowed, allowed to be Then cool. they had to get new friends, right? Now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they had to get new friends. But, oh, but look, you're going to think my mom's this, cool? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. This little guy, when I was in the middle of this whole cancer thing, and I had on great big slicker rain boot things that had polka dots on them mm -hmm. and I had um, different polka dot tights and mm -hmm. this little character this little guy probably about four years old he looked at me and goes how do you what how do you have what your legs are spots and I said <laughs> I know aren't they fun and he he looked at me and go and he says do they hold you up <laughs> 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 and at that moment where you know I can cry on the drop of, of a hat and I looked at him and I'm like yeah my polka dots they hold me up honey You're, I'm, gla I'm glad you I'm glad you figured that that's a good out. way to put it yeah. I thought you were going to say you said you're, you're clashing <laughs> <laughs> those dots aren't those oh, other Mr. dots Blackwell. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, the, Aaron, the fashion police yeah yeah, the fashion police, right? Fashion. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, 
Sergeant. Uh, I appreciate your allowing me to come along on your journey into the creative okay. land of people with music and, and interests and so forth. Um, I love that, that you're willing to devote this time to think about teachers and the role of education as we move forward into this new school year and to talk about monarch butterflies and you know mm -hmm. how how literally, I, I don't know if you can see it. So I crocheted this uh, collar just for Zoom because you know some of the things are not yet back in person. And I felt like even though my paintings that I painted are happy and bright, I didn't feel bright enough myself. But anyhow, in the book, there are puzzle pieces and there's a puzzle piece. Uh, <laughs> can you see it, Aaron? Okay. I see it. Okay, so I feel like we're all part of the puzzle. And that puzzle is the arts puzzle. That puzzle is the education puzzle. That puzzle is the monarch butterfly conservation puzzle. But when you plant milkweed at your house in Cincinnati or Aaron in California or me up here in Wisconsin, because that's the only thing that monarchs the caterpillars eat literally the only thing. Now there are lots of kinds of milkweed, but they only eat milkweed. But when you plant one more milkweed plant at your home or your library or your church, your synagogue, or your, you know, the Rotary Club, or whatever adds milkweed, that's one more piece of the puzzle. And so we're all building this puzzle together uh, to, to do the very best we can for children, to do the best we can for this planet that, that we're leaving for them. So that's my, that's my contribution. And I, I am so grateful for your giving me a little bit of your spotlight to right. share. Everybody go out and plant <laughs> milkweed. Yeah. Mention your website again. Okay. Anything so, you want to mention. Yeah, all your uh, socials. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Okay. Well, the website is Rainbows Within Reach. And all of my work is self-published. I am not yet at the point of being on Amazon. And that could take a whole different hour while you guys would tell me why that's a huge, horrible mistake. But anyhow, um, financially, it's all independent. And you need to come find me at rainbowswithinreach.com. Uh, the songs are digitally downloadable at a site that teachers would be aware of called teacherspayteachers.com. And you would just go there and then type in my name, Debbie Clement, and you would be able to digitally download a song as people get away from thinking in terms of buying a whole album or CD. Um, other socials, I'm on Instagram as Debbie Clement. I have Debbie Clement, my self as a you know a person on Facebook but we also have a rainbows within reach fan page we just my daughter and I opened a fan page called mighty wings to help again with the whole idea of what can one person do against the the demise of an ambassador insect mm -hmm. so all right. Well, as we go out, thank you again for being with us. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and play Red, White, and Blue as we go out. Can I tell them one second's worth of I know I can't do it. Absolutely. Once again. I wrote that song in the immediate aftermath of September 11th. Yeah. And so if you think in terms of that being a Tuesday of that week, on Friday of that week, I was the weekly music lady at our local Jewish synagogue and leading Tat Shabbat. So I already told you my father is a pastor. So um, the Judaic heritage is not my own, but I had been there for years with my guitar and my six chords leading Tat Shabbat in Hebrew. And on that Friday, it was the national day of prayer and mourning and reflection. And if you think back to that week, you know, we didn't know up from down and what had really happened and what was forthcoming. And it was my job to sing with three, four and five year olds in front of probably about three or 400 adults in the synagogue. And I had a bag of flags prior to September 11th. And I thought, you know, maybe these parents and these grandparents just need to see their most beloved child standing there and holding a flag. And what could I teach them in 20 minutes 
that they could perform in front of, of this large crowd. Um, red, white, and blue. So we make a flag. We make a flagpole and we put the flag on the top. And instead of signing three colors, we sign the flag, red, white, and blue. I mm -hmm. love you. And I've learned from the kids that those are Spider-Man fingers. So yeah. you know, that's that's really hard for oh, four with one small change. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. they know Spider-Man. So I say, okay, everybody get your Spider-Man hands out. Now move them up here. I love you. Yeah. Sing for our country, America, brave and true. All right. Okay. Thanks All right. again. Bye-bye. Wow. All right. Goodbye. Have a good have a good day. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. We have social. Twitter. Yeah, uh-huh, pod. Instagram. Yeah, uh-huh, pod. Facebook. Yeah, uh-huh, pod. Website. www.yeah-uh-huh.com. So let us know. Hit us back. Have a great week. Hey.